So what is the real problem? The root of the problem when people tell me it's too much homework is you're not being efficient, right? I don't know what went on here yesterday because I wasn't here and I don't see any notes yet. I haven't seen the substitutes notes yet. Uh, so I don't know what, I don't know if you guys were trying really hard and couldn't figure things out or what. But I know I've made some observations you know, over the last week and I've noticed some people, uh, you're not as focused as you could be. Right? So when you should be working in a group to try to solve a problem, you're kind of having fun talking about, oh, hairstyle or, or fidgeting. Right now I'm talking to you and I see four people right now that are not listening to me. They're doing other things. I can tell you're not listening to me because what we know from just, from what I know of all the research, you can't do two things at once. So when you're busy going through your, fol your folder, or you're busy texting, or you're busy talking, you're not listening. You're not focused on the problem. If you're not focused, it's going to be difficult. If you're not focused, it's gonna, you're not going to be able to complete the task in the amount of time that you're given. I mean, that's just, it's a very simple relationship. You want to get this stuff done, you had study groups. You, had small, you were assigned to study groups in this classroom. You should have been working throughout this period, and then you had advisory as well, didn't you? So you, had, you could have gotten together an advisory and, and really got ahead of the curve and, work, and kept working on trying to solve these problems. These actual problems, these are not that difficult. We're going to see, we're going to do them together, okay? You're going to see that they're really... If you break it down and you take it one step at a time, you're going to find that really it's just an application of what you learned about the scientific method. It's just applying the scientific method. That's all it is. All right? So when I, I hear that some of you guys, I hear you when some of you are saying to me, I'm confused, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Well, we're going to take it step by step. I'm not going to, I don't expect you to jump right into the into the fray and start running. I expect you to start walking, and then hopefully we'll get you to a jog, and then finally you're running. I get that. So don't think that I'm, I'm here to fail you. That's not the, that's not the point of me being here. Uh, I, I, take it, uh, I take it as a failure myself when you fail, okay? I do expect you to fail in your, in your trials, though. And your classwork is rigorous, isn't it? Yes or no? Yeah. It is. It's rigorous. It's meant to be rigorous. I want you to struggle in the classroom and to go ahead and fail. It's safe for you to fail now. I don't want you to fail on your tests. Does that make sense? I want you to be successful on your tests. The only way you're going to be successful on the test is if you try your hardest now. How do I know if you're trying hard? If you've uploaded your work. If I don't have any work in the grade book right now for yesterday, I'm concerned that you were not focused, that you didn't get anything done because you were talking to your friends instead of doing what you're doing. You may have worked really hard, but I have no evidence of that. See, one of the jobs, one of the primary jobs you have to do, especially on a day that I'm absent, that I'm not here to help you and observe and make a decision for myself on what's going on, one of the things that you have to understand is that when, we're, when we are... Uh, when I'm absent, or even when I'm here, you have to give me evidence that you're trying. There has to be a discussion. You're going to come to me and say, I didn't understand. I tried, but I didn't understand. And my first question is what? Who can tell me? Yeah. Were you focused? Did you really try your best? I don't know if you tried your best. How, do I, how can I tell if you, how do I know if you tried your best? What is the, what's the evidence that you tried your best? Say again. You have to submit it something. Let me see what you've done. And then when people tell me everybody was confused, well, let me see what everybody's done. Let me see what you've done. Because then the other thing is, it's not, just, it's not just that I can then say, okay, well, they tried and they just weren't able to do it, so let me figure out another way to handle this. That's one thing. And the other thing is, the other thing is, if you try and you didn't do well, 
then I can make a decision, I can actually figure out what you don't understand if I have something to look at. You tell me I don't understand anything is not true. You un do you understand the word the? Do you? Okay, yeah. A, do you understand the word A? So you, you understood something that was written on that paper, didn't you? Well, what part confused you? I can't tell why. Because you didn't submit anything. If I have nothing to, to evaluate, I have no way of knowing what you understand and what you don't understand. If you try your best and all you can get through is one-third, that's great. Then I can see, I can look at that one-third and start to decide where is it that we need to go to make sure you get the, the other two-thirds. But if you're not doing, you're not submitting anything to me, I got nothing to, nothing to assess you with. Is that clear? So next time, even if it's bad, even if you feel this is horrible, turn it in. It's something we can discuss. Yeah. Right. Well, we'll talk about that during advisory. If you'd like, I'll write you a pass if you're not my advisory, and, and you come here and we'll talk about it, okay? Very good. Then we can talk about it in advisory. So this was the lesson we cut that you were to do while I was gone. And what you notice is that this was the lesson plan that Mr. Tolls got. And the, the disease that we looked at is something called consumption. Could you turn the lights off someone, please? Thank you. It used to be called consumption. And it's actually the, the, the disease today, we, you know it is tuberculosis. It's one of the oldest diseases in, in human in the human condition. It's impacted history. It's affected how empires have, have done what they do. It's impacted wars and the military. It's impacted society. It's killed children and old people and young people. Tuberculosis is, uh, it's in our literature. It's impacted how the writings that our poets have done, have written it's impacted the stories, our, the novels, our writers have written. And so because of that, they call it the romantic disease. The romantic meaning the, 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 something, the disease that's impacted the romance of our society. That's Western society, but it's also impacted African society and American society. Native American society was impacted by tuberculosis before the Europeans landed on... Uh, you know, on Plymouth Rock, before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Tuberculosis was already here. It impacts animals as well. So it's a very, very big disease. Upload, scan, upload. I made the time. We had to give that back. All right, all right, all right, can we not, I, look, look, I can't handle, please stop, I can't handle uh, chaos. I don't do I don't deal well with chaos. So we're gonna if you have a situation, you need to you need to call you need to raise your hand and ask a question calmly. There is an there is a space for you to, to submit it electronically. Uh, Mr. Tolls told me that some of you complained that there wasn't. I looked, you were right, I corrected it. Uh, and he told you, I believe, what he told me he told you that can I finish talking? Thank you. He told me that he told you to that I would probably uh, correct it before the end of the day, and he was right if he did tell you that. Okay. You should have looked. Yes. Can we? Can we not? Oh my God! Didn't I just say? No, that's not dressed up. Is it your birthday? Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Come here. Come here. Come around here. Yeah, would you mind? Make sure there's no, uh, nothing inside. Just offensive stuff. It's right here. Come here. Hurry up. You're taking all day. You're getting your hits. All right. I can talk. I'm going to hit her. She's going to get hit uh, 14 or 15 times. 15 times. 16, all right? 16. Dang. Are you really 17? No, 16. 
Make it every, I don't care who you are, big or small, birthday hits, you got to take them. It's bad luck. Birthday's coming up? Good. It's bad luck you don't get your take your hits. Come on. Like, as if I'm going to hurt you. Come on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have work to do. So many of you complained about how hard difficult it was. I didn't understand that. I don't think it was hard at all. Shh. But it's okay. Yeah, we're about to. Uh, no, but that's why. She's get, she's uh, been intubated. Yeah. Do we stretch? Do we stress you out? I stress you out? Or is your people in general? Huh? What? I can't hear you. It's impacting us today. So one of the things I asked you to do is look at the history of tuberculosis kind of as an intro to what tuberculosis was. So I gave you this graphic organizer and looked at tuberculosis. And, and just, just to let you know, tuberculosis starts in the lung, uh, usually through coughing, inhaling. It's a bacterial infection. You can get all that from this, right? Pretty simple. Is this a problem for anybody? Does anybody have a problem understanding what I've said so far? So you guys seem to have understood this much, right? So when students tell me they don't understand anything, it's kind of a bit of an untruth, isn't it? So you understand something. The question is, what is it you don't understand? Again, you submitting something to me is a way for me to tell what is it you don't understand. So it impacts people's lives, even today. Today, tuberculosis is, li is alive and well. We do have drugs that impact it, but there are some strains of tuberculosis that are resistant to those drugs now. So it's, it's an awful disease. This is what it looks like in your lungs. It impacts your lungs. It, it infects you. It eats you from the inside out, pretty much. It gets into your brain. It, can, it gets into the, your, your spinal cord. It, get, it's, it's, it starts to eat your bones. Uh, that's why it's called consumption. It consumes you. And it looks like it. You start to become emaci emaciated. You start to lose muscle mass and look weak and thin. That's why they, that's why they are, the old English writers called it consumption. Again, there's some antibiotic resistance to, uh, strains. Uh, this is kind of the timeline for modern strains of tuberculosis, uh, at, at least the history of solving the problem of tuberculosis. We, tuberculosis, you don't know it is a big problem today. It's a problem uh, mainly among the people that are homeless because of the condition in which they live. They don't have medical uh, access to medical treatment. They don't have a lot of antibiotics. They, don't, they, 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 they exist in a kind of wet, cold, hot, Every, every bag, their bodies are stressed all the time, and because of that, their immune system is, its resistance of their immune systems is, is impacted, and so they're more susceptible to infection. And so tuberculosis is a real problem among the, the, the poor. And this is important. Why do I mention all this? Because this impacts the experiment. Understanding that the conditions in which you live impact your health is an important part of the experiment that we're going to, that we're going to, or you should have read about yesterday, right? All right, so uh, here we found out that tuberculosis was contagious in 1865. 1884 the first, uh, was the first sanatorium. A sanatorium, when you read your books and your, st and your stories and literature in Mr. Krupa's class or Miss Pelagano's class, you're going to read about sanatoriums. Why would you read about sanatoriums? Because they were a big thing. The sanatoriums were places where you isolated the sick. It gave them air. Usually they, put, they tried to play, put, uh, put them in places like Arizona. Dry, fresh air moving around. Why, why would you think dry, fresh air is important for someone that has tuberculosis? Yeah. Partly on, so you want to make sure you get fresh air to make sure that the lungs can can ventilate and helps your body heal because you're when you have that moist. Who who has walked out into a hot, humid day? Does that feel good to you? No, it's harder for you to breathe. 
And the more moist it is, the more the harder it is for you to circulate air through your lungs, the easier it is for that bacteria to grow and fester. When you have a bacterial infection, your body fights that infection. You know that because all of your teenagers and you, almost all of you have had zits. Those zits are your body fighting bacterial infections. They're, it's a bacteria called acne. And your body fights it, and the white blood cells in your body go in and attack, and there's literally a war in every zit. And that's that pus that comes out is your white blood, your dead white blood cells along with dead bacteria. So you have to understand that your body's constantly fighting bacteria, and tuberculosis is one of those. Robert Koch discovers the actual bacteria, M. tuberculosis. It's one strain. There are many strains, and we know the history of it. In fact, we know that this bacteria, this form of bacteria, not this strain, but a strain related to this bacteria was around during Pangaea. Who knows what Pangaea is? Uh, before the dinosaurs, when the, all the, or was it, I'm not sure that was before the dinosaurs, but certainly before humans, when all the continents were one giant continent, this bacteria was already here. In 1943, streptomycin as a drug that was used uh, to treat it was discovered. So 1943, right before the end of World War II. 43 to 52, they discovered some other treatments that helped as well. And TB, uh, now, we st now in 1993, there's, uh, there, there, there's a TB case has declined due to increased funding and en enhanced TB control efforts. What are kind of, what would you think would be things that you would do to control tuberculosis? Yeah. Like, if it was around this time, I'm pretty sure restaurants would put in, like, the sign that says, employees must wash their hands. Yep. What, sanitation, uh, hygiene, uh, covering your mouth when you sneeze. If you can impact the spread of the disease, you're going you're gonna to reduce the number of people that have the disease, and that means that you have less of that bacteria around. Yeah. Now let me ask you something. Who came up with all these ideas to these questions I just did, I just asked? You guys did, didn't you? And I just all I did was read this and ask you questions and you guys answered it. So when you tell me this was hard, I I kind of I think it's a it's a lack of confidence rather than a and a lack of reading and thought and and discussion, right? So you have to discuss this with each other. You have to actually when it's time this for small group sessions, you have to actually discuss the reading. You have to read and discuss it. Not what's happening with your hair, not what's happening with your favorite show, but what's happening here and now. Okay, take a look at this. It, in Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries, what people called this disease was this. Right? So tuberculosis is known as a captain among the men of death, right? So when it came to things that kill you, what was the captain of things that kill you? Tuberculosis. So many people are freaked out about Ebola, right? And all these things that we hear in the news, uh, what is the Zika virus? Uh, this, these are nothing compared to what people lived, li lived with before antibiotics, before 1943. Waves of death would come and people randomly die. You either got it or you didn't. Um, all right, so there's a history here. You can read it or not. This is just a background, though. There was a good... There's a poster. Who can read that? Let's take a look at a poster. Somebody read it. Uh, someone else. Yeah, in the back. Many times worse than war. Americans died of tuberculosis since World War all right, so a number of people have died uh, since World War, 1,800,000, many times worse than war. What does it say here? All right, America, you have it in front of you because it's a, a you, oh, no, you don't, because you, you have it on your, in your Jupiter grades message. Americans killed in all wars since 1776. What does it say? Anybody can read it? 244,357. So 244,357 people since, since 1776. That's how many people died 
and the tuberculosis killed what? 1,800,000. That's a big number. Now, what war are they talking about? What war are they talking about? Who can answer this question? Why does it say, why does it say World War without a number behind it? Was it World War One or Two? Yeah. World War One because uh, they did not know that there was going to be a World War Two at that point. Exactly. So they were just called World War. Does that make sense? Yep. Did you hear what she said? Yep. All right. So, did you, does it make sense to you? Is it, does somebody have a question on how did she came up to that conclusion? All right. So, that was the kind of the first question you were supposed to answer. What? What? When you see. World War, and there's no number behind it, you know you're probably talking about a time before World War II. They might call it the Great War, right? Because that's what they called it, the Great War. A lot of people died during that war, but tuberculosis killed more, even more than that. Uh, All right, so in this, ex in this uh, discussion, you read a little more about history in 1874. Uh, this guy, Livingston Trudeau, uh, got this, in, this infection, uh, was infected with tuberculosis. His brother had died uh, an untimely death because of it. He was concerned about it. So an interesting thing about this disease, or, or about the time, is that in the 19th century, when you, see, when you see 19th century, what does that mean to you? Yeah. 1800s. 1800s. Why is that? Why do they say, why is the 19th century the 1800s? It's interesting. It's annoying and interesting. Yeah. Because the way the timeline is placed, they called between in the era of BCE, oh wait, no, sorry, not BCE, B, uh, CE, uh, between 0 and 100, they called that the century, so even though they were not a full century, they still called it the first century. So no, that's, you're close though. The, from zero to 100, that's not the first, the first century was what? The 100s. So 100, 101 through, one, through, two, through 199 was the first century. So there was a whole hundred years it's not accounted for. Does that make sense? So 100s was the first century, 200s was the et cetera. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. No. Um, Did I get that right? Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me think about that. Maybe you are right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think you got it right. Yeah. I always get myself confused on this. So zero to, let me write it down. Let me do, let me do what I tell you to do all the time. Zero to 100 is what? The first century, right? That's right. You're right. And then from 100 to 200 is what? The second century. So when we fast forward to the 1800s, to the 1900s, what is that? 19th century. Even though it's the 1800s. So you're right. The 0 to 100 was, is accounted for. Sorry about that. I confused myself. It is. It's the 21st century right now. Good, good, uh, good analogy. Did everybody hear that? He asked, "Is it the 21st century right now?" It is, isn't it? Because we're in the night. We're we're in the 20th, the 20s, right? The 2000s. So it's the 21st century. So when I read this, I made notes. And so I, I gave you those notes. For some people, they, they were, I don't know why this was com confusing, but this is a tuberculosis, is a bacterial infection. Increases stress leads to an increase in infections. We, we discussed that a minute ago, right? So I think that's, everybody pretty much understands that. Does anyone not understand that? That's an important idea. You have to understand that because that's the whole point of the experiment, right? Increased stress leads to increased susceptibility of it to infection. 19th century, uh, what did they believe in the 19th century? Anybody? What did they believe in the 19th century? Can anybody read it? Did, any, did anybody read it? 
in the back. I can't see anybody. They got light. They got light in my in my face, and I don't want to say names when I'm recording. Go ahead. Me? Yes. Okay. In the 19th century, a portion of the medical community believed that diseases like consumption were caused by an unfortunate combination of bad family work. So that that's really key. Is they literally thought that if you got sick, it was your your family's fault. Which explains why in the 19th century, if you had an autistic brother or sister, or if someone was born with a birth defect, what did they do to you? They, this is not Sparta. They didn't kill you. In Sparta, they would have killed you. They would have thrown you off a cliff. They did. Anybody that was... You know, who's seen the movie 300? The Hunchback? The whole point is that he, they, his parents didn't kill him. And because they didn't kill him, he was a curse to his people, Right? So that's not, I'm not suggesting that's a good idea, but that's what they did. What did they do in the 18th century? They didn't kill anybody, but what did they do? They might, they might put them in a, in a sanitarium, right, in a, or in, a, in some home. But most people didn't have that kind of money, so they just did what? Who's seen the movie Flowers in the Attic? Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, that's what they would do. They would put you in the attic. You would be in the attic. They would tell people you died. And you, they would feed you. You would just never go outside. Yeah. Isn't like, isn't that where like the term handicap comes from? Because like people with like defects would like sit on the street, like like people with their hats or like walking. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They, at at the time, people that had that it would have a cap, and they would be begging for money because that's the only thing they could do if you had if you were disabled in some way. Thank God, times have changed. But in any case, this is the thought process. Robert Koch, in 1882, though, demonstrated that it was this bacteria that caused disease. Now, notice that, notice that now a lot of people I know, based on some uh, discussion with you, a lot of people got confused as to what MTB was. MTB is myobacterium tuberculosis. It's in the writing. You have to take notes when you read. In this case, I'm highlighting because of time, but if, you were, if I were you, I would have taken notes on the reading. I would have taken time to take notes on the reading. A lot of people read textbooks, science and socialist textbooks, like they read uh, a science fiction novel. You can't do that. You can't read a textbook like you read a novel. A textbook is meant for you to take apart and to get ideas and set them aside. And you're going to have, you know, in this class, and you should know in every class in high school and college, you have to apply these ideas. So you have to set these ideas apart. When you see something that's italicized, you see a, uh, an abbreviation like MTB, then you have to know that that's something you need to know as, you're reading, as you read along. If you go along and you read MTB, odds are somebody in the writing told you what it was. Go back and look it up. All right. So productive. Uh, all right, so we're good with this. And they also mentioned here something else that was key, and you could probably bet you'll see it on a test. And that's at Louis Pasteur, right? It was Co Koch and Louis Pasteur they came up with this thing called germ theory of infection. What is germ theory of infection? Who can tell me? What it state? Before I go to the next page, uh, where am I going to find what, it's, what the germ theory is? Where am I going to find that? Yeah. Um, in the passage, but I, um, I read that the germ theory was the theory that germs infected people. Mycobacterium. 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 What trouble? It wasn't just like family members infecting family members. That's right. Very good. It's the idea that germs cause disease. That seems like, you know, here's this big name, germ theory, and some. I and I'm telling you, I've i I've, I've heard some people. I've I've discussed this stuff with some people. They're like, I'm confused. Why is that confusing? Germ theory, disease is caused by germs. 
Does that seem difficult to you? That doesn't seem difficult to me. It's a straightforward idea. That, that idea, that simple idea that everyone in here believes and understands, right? I think everyone in here understands that disease is, called by germ, is caused by germs. Not by voodoo or by bad spirits. Even though all of us say bless you when we sneeze. All of us knock on wood when, some, when something happens, right? Well, at least a lot of us do. The, the reason we do these things is because there's still part of us that thinks of disease as some kind of fate, right? That there's something in us. Now, today we know that, there, that genetics does play a role in disease. But back then, they didn't even understand that there were these things called germs. But Koch and Pasteur, you've heard of pasteurized milk, right? that was named after Pasteur, they came up with these experiments that, that showed that, in fact, it was disease that was impacting it. So, in any case, here's the experiment. Dr. Trudeau had followed Dr. Koch's work with interest. He worked hard to learn how to culture MTB organisms. What's MTB? Uh, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. And... It's my what? Tuberculosis. But it's a Latin binomial nomenclature, just like we name ourselves. We are called Homo sapien. Tuberculosis is known as mycobacterium. Tuberculosis. Genus and species, right? All right. Where was I? Here we go. He worked to... Uh, and was the first to do so in the United States, intrigued by the co correlation between healthy outdoor lifestyle. So here's, the, here's what he wants to know. Healthy outdoor lifestyle. If someone got tuberculosis, they would tell you to go out and get good air. They would encourage you to go for walks. They would send you to a sanitarium where you spend a lot of time in that dry, fresh air. In the mountains, usually. New Mexico, California. Places that had low humidity and they had a lot of fresh air away from pollution and humidity where there's a lot of water in the air that gets in your lungs. So the efficient, uh, healthy outdoor and efficient anti-tubricular was, in other words, he wanted to know why, was it true, what? What did he want to know? What is it that he wanted to know, especially since he was sick? He had this disease. What did he want to know? What was his question? His general question. It says it right there. What was interesting him? Silence. Um, it was that if living a healthy lifestyle can help you to get better. Right. Does lifestyle... And if I would, I would expect to see a thirty pencils in, uh, writing on paper at this point, since no one answered. Lifestyle, yeah, or rather, I should ask the question: Is lifestyle an eff an effective what treatment? Not Koch. This is this is this this is Koch. Tr Dr. Trudeau was was impacted by Koch. Koch's experiments were uh, uh, much more detailed. Oh, so this, is the other guy. this is yeah. This is Dr. Trudeau. See, let's re let's read on. Dr. Trudeau was had followed Dr. Koch's work, so he read the work. He was interested. Why was he interested? Because he had tuberculosis, and he saw his bro his brother die of it, and he didn't want to die of it. So he wanted to know, what can I do to, to treat this? So he devised a simple experiment. The experiment spoke to both the MTB germ as a causative agent of tuberculosis and a possible therapy for the disease. The experiment was des uh, described in the 1886 paper, Environment in its Relationship to the Progress of Bacterial Infection in Tuberculosis. It sounds like that sounds like a really fancy way of stating what we said here, right? 
What, in other words, what he's saying, the title environment is in its relationship to the progress of bacterial infection and tuberculosis, is really asking what? Is lifestyle and effective treatment for MTV? That's it. That whole long sentence right here really just translates into this question, doesn't it? All right? So it really isn't that difficult. All right. So he set up three different scenarios. He said, first, the first question I have, he says, what results ensue when both bacterial infection and unhygienic surroundings are made to coexist in tuberculosis? So the first question is, what happens when you have a bacterial, you have that bacteria, you have been exposed to that bacteria, because that's number one. You have to be exposed to it. And then number two, while you're exposed to it, what happens when, while you're exposed to it, you also have a bad lifestyle? Now, when we're talking about lifestyle, we're not talking about partying all night, right? We're talking, although that might be an impact, we're talking about stressing out your body. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, that's great. This was your hypothesis, right? If you, if both, and I'm just going to say both for the sake of space, then higher infection, higher negative impact. How's that? Do you agree? That's your point? I, I agree. It spreads. So you have a negative impact. It spreads more. It, get, it makes you sicker. The bacterial infection goes faster. Whatever those things may be. Bad things happen when both are in play. Do you agree that that's your idea? Yeah. And that, that was what he was asking. What happens if both? Second, he asks, what if your unhygienic surroundings, when every known precaution has been taken to exclude the, the, the bacteria? In other words, what happens when you have a bad lifestyle, when you're poor, or when you live in mud or squalor, but there is no bacteria. Are you still going to get tuberculosis? Do you still get consumption? Because maybe that's what happens, right? And lastly, the third thing he asks is, is bacillary infection invariably progressive in animals placed under the best conditions? In other words, in the third, the third question he asks is, is, the, is actually the, question, the main question, right? Can lifestyle be a good treatment for tuberculosis? Can, and the question he's asking here is, what if I have the infection, but I have a good lifestyle? Could that, could that stop tuberculosis? Do you agree that those are the three things that he's stating? Those are the, things, the three things he's going to investigate? All right. Which do you think is a control group? When you're looking at these three things, these three groups... Right? And I did this. I summarized this for you. Right? Yeah? Um, experiment number two, because no bacteria was introduced. Right. So no bacteria is definitely the negative control. Right? And so then this one is certainly a positive control. Right? So here you have positive control here. And this is your negative control, because here you have... Here you have, the problem is he's testing two things, really. It's a good experiment uh, only because of what he's testing. But ideally, you probably would only want to do, you probably do one more thing. You'd probably give him a bad environment and not. Let me look at this. This was a bacteria. Yeah, that's right. So depending on your question, you have, you have a kind of a positive and negative control. And then your question then is, does the, this is the question. This is the experimental group, right? Does, does a good environment impact, uh, uh, is a good, living a good life, living a clean, hygienic life, is that a good treatment for uh, tuberculosis? All right. What are the controlled variables? What is it that they're controlling? And I'm just going to use, I'm just going to, you can talk about it in small groups and give it, give me a more, uh, when you resubmit it, if you feel like you have, didn't understand it, you're going to resubmit your work. Hopefully you submitted something to me already. But as you resubmit your work, now that you have time to go back and look it over, 
uh, hopefully you're, you're going to list to me all the variables, but I'm just going to tell you that it's the environment, right? The environment The environment is, and all the things that have to do with the environment, the, how wet it is, how dry it is, how deep, how dark it is, etc. All that is what are controlled variables. Right? And what's the other one? The type of rabbit. The type of rabbit, that's correct. And the type of bacteria. That's right. Very good. Excellent. Somebody did their work. And the type of bacteria. And not even just the type, though I absolutely, um, it's wonderful that you said the type of bacteria, that's excellent, all right? Uh, it's not just the type, but whether there was a bacteria or not, right? Bacteria or no bacteria. So those are kind of all the things that are going to be controlled. You're controlling that, right? So you have a population of rabbits that either have the bacteria and they have this environment, or they don't have the bacteria, and you have that environment, etc. All right, so you got those three, those three groups. So being exposed to I see. So group. I just want to double check. I don't want to make any mistakes here. Yeah, so that's, that's some two, two, right? yeah. group three was good conditions over what this pack on to the next page. So this is the data. These are kind of the results, not kind of, they are the results. So you have three groups, and I wrote it in purple here because it, I didn't want you, I thought it would help if you didn't have to flip the pages back and forth. So the first group is exposed to bacteria and bad conditions, and we would expect bad things to happen, and by bad things, the ultimate bad thing when you have tuberculosis is dead, right? And so that's what happens, right? This, notice this group is the worst survival group, right? Most of these rabbits died. And that makes sense to us. Our hypothesis was, was correct. Four, I think it was four out of five, right? Yeah. Now, what about group two? is exposed to bad conditions, but there was no bacteria. Now that's interesting. Bad conditions, no bacteria, and they all survived. So we can survive bad, a bad environment. Living in bad conditions is not, and you could go back and look at the different conditions. It's actually very interesting. I would look at it and make sure you understood it, yeah. Why are the lines like sectioned off? You mean, why does it come down? Because they wanted to show you that they, it's just how they drew it. No, they, like the lines, like why do they like show how many rabbits is left? The lower the line, the less rabbits they have. Oh. Yeah, these these were uh, percent survival. So this line here represents the group one survived at about twenty percent uh, after three months after, right? Where group three uh, survived at eighty percent. And group two survived at uh, something like 100, well, at 100 percent. And I'm not sure why did they crop it down here though. That's interesting that they did that. Maybe that's when they died. That's when those rabbits died. At, at after month one, they dropped down to eight, uh, to 80 percent survival and stayed there. That's my guess. All right. So in any case, uh, those are the three groups, right? And, and it's interesting to me that when you're exposed to, to, to uh, the third group was uh, having both bacteria. Uh, actually, that's not both. That should be bacteria. That's, uh, huh, it's not letting me erase. It's, uh, group, t group three was what? Who has bad conditions but no bacteria. Group one is exposed to bad conditions and the bacteria. Group three is the bacteria but good conditions. 
good conditions uh, to bacteria, but good conditions. And there, that makes sense, doesn't it? That the bacteria hurts you, but it hurts you more if you have bad conditions. So, yes. So, you, what's your conclusion? What would you conclude from this, just from this raw data, without analyzing any more, just what would you conclude? Yeah? That the better the health condition, the better the survival chance. That's right. So, the better the, the conditions you live in, you know, the fresh air, the bright sunshine, the the better your survival rate. So if you were this doctor, Dr. Trudeau, where would you, would you, how would you live? What would you, would you change your lifestyle? Yeah. yeah, I would change my lifestyle. I would move to Arizona, live in a sanitarium, a nice healthy air, you know, stay away from eat right and all that. That might actually help you survive. So that's interesting. Okay, so then I think you, it, it, the questions, were they that hard, difficult? What was the difficult questions here? And I think you can answer. Based on that, you can answer all these. Is that correct? Two through five is not a problem? Is it, if it is answered, ask me now, because I'm going to ask you to resubmit this with the right answers on your own for homework. You have this in your Jupiter grades. You can write down the answers on paper and upload them. Yeah. Okay, see, that's what I want to hear. What might be the effect of crowding on effective exposure rate of individuals, of individual animals to MTB? Would you, so they, now look at the hint. They rephrased it because they knew it was difficult to, the way they wrote it. And they said what? Would you rather board an airplane for a three-hour trip where two out of 300 pa passengers had the flu or board an airplane where 200 out of 300 passengers had the flu. So see, the, the proportions are the same, but you have more people with it, right? Which would you rather do, by the way? Two out of 300. Two out of 300 versus 200 out of 300. Do you agree? Actually, the proportions are more. I'm sorry, I misread that one, too. So two, two out of three, right? Two out of 300, I would rather be on the plane with two out of 300. I have a better chance of not getting the flu, right? And that's what they're asking. Which would you rather live in? Crowded? Why? How does crowded areas, how does that increase your ability to get whatever this contagious disease, this germ? They called it germ in the day, back in the day. They didn't know about these things called bacteria. Today we call them what? Bacteria. Now understand, today we also, we also call germs, the other thing we call germs is a virus, but it's different. The viruses are different. But yeah? Um, did I phrase this right? I said if there's a big crowd, then more people are getting infected than if there was a small crowd. It's exactly right. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. The more people, that, the more creatures or people there are, the higher the likelihood that, you're, that that's going to happen. Well, you just well, you just heard a sneeze. By the way, bless you. Is you're gonna hear you hear a sneeze? Dang it! There it is. Whatever it is, it just got spread. Now he's probably sneezing because of allergies, but that sneeze just spread whatever he has to everybody else. Now whether you get sick or not depends on your own immune system. But the more of us that there are, the more chances that you're gonna have somebody with the, the bacteria and that they're gonna sneeze. And, of course, the more of us that there are, the easier it is for everybody to breathe that in. Does that make sense? Yes? No, it's okay. If not, say so. Okay. So. Yes. Uh, we can wait till Friday, the, till Monday to resubmit. Okay. But if you if you haven't submitted anything, submit part one at least. Okay. Also, I I, I scanned and turned in my scientific method packet, and it say like not turned in or something. Can we look at that during advisory? Are you my advisor? No. All right. So come back before advisory and get a pass from me. Mr. Mendoza. So I already turned it turned it in. So so I just like rescan. Re just rescan it after you put your new answers and submit it again. Okay. Uh, you might want to wait till next week, anyways. So don't do it like tonight. It depends on how badly you did the first one. So 
Then I would just wait. Okay. I would just wait. Because we're going to go over part two on Friday. Yeah. I was not. How you doing? Fine. Could you do me a giant favor? Yeah. There's a kettle back there in the cabinet. A uh, kettle back? Kettle. A kettle. Yeah. And a green thermos looking thing. And a coffee. Could you bring it all up to the front? Sure. Start boiling some water and then I'll take care of the coffee. Okay, okay, so let's get moving on. Move on to the next question. Next part, six, seven, eight, we require you to, to really to, to think a little bit and actually do some deep thinking for the case number six because you have to actually do this for homework. Again, I'm going to expect this to be done. It says no exercise to be done at home. But look at number six. What, what is a dependent variable in the rabbit island experiment? Some, someone tell me, what's the dependent yeah. Um, the you know what? Maybe, should I should I let you answer now that we've gone over it and just write it down, or should should we discuss it openly? Raise your hand if we think we should discuss it openly. Raise your hand if you think we should just, just let you answer and, and submit it on your own. Wow. Okay. Only one brave soul. All right. Very good. <laughs> so uh, let's go with the vote. The eyes have it. This exercise, uh, let's say, what is the dependent variable? Who thinks they know what the dependent variable? By the way, let's look at the, Let's look at this. Hmm, maybe Dr. Tumor's experiment was not so simple after all. Also list all the independent variables you can think of in the experiment. So what's the dependent variable? Yeah. How many rabbits survived? Yeah. Yeah. I, I automatically thought how many rabbits died. But you're right. How many rabbits survived, which is just the same thing, right? What percentage of rabbits survive? Or what percentage of rabbits died? Either one. Is the dependent. Everybody good with that? What's the independent variable? Yeah? Which rabbits were artificially that's one, infected? That's one independent variable. Very good. So which, what, which rabbits you actually infected with it? That's excellent. Right? What's another one? In the back? I can't see. Um, the amount of food and nutrition. That's right. Their amount of food and nutrition that they initially got because the rabbits that were in bad conditions got very little food. What's another variable that was independent that you controlled? The environment. The, all the things in the environment, which is what we're talking about, right? All the things in the environment. So specifically what? Nutrition, whether we, inf what, whether we infected them or not. The conditions that they lived in. What, what conditions? Like, yeah. Go ahead, then we'll come back to you. Go ahead, because there's many of them, right? Yeah. Right, we discussed that. So whether they got the disease or not, yeah? What's another one? Whether they got, like, fresh air and open space. Right, exactly. Open space or fresh air? Or were they in that box, right? Were they, was it dark or was it light? So there's a lot of different factors he controlled. So it's a little more complicated than we than it first seemed. And that's that, that, this question we kind of already answered, didn't we? I think it was number two or three where we listed all the different variables that are controlled. Yeah. Yes, it could. It, time is an independent variable, uh, but in this experiment, we didn't change. We didn't change when we measured the time. Does that make sense? It said at the bottom uh, how many months passed until the rabbits died. It's. I guess you could say yeah. Let's go ahead and say that it is, but it's kind of. It's not really one of the things that we're. We're just, it, we randomly chose like month three, month four. We're just taking the measurements during those times. I can go ahead, we can go ahead and say the time is an independent variable. Uh, I'm just trying to focus more on the things that Trudeau controlled. But you're right, time is, an, is certainly an independent variable. 
Because if you measured it two minutes after you infected, you would probably have 100% survival for all three groups, right? Uh, and so when you measure, when you go and count the rabbits is an important variable. All right. Uh, let's look at, remember you're doing number seven at home. I want you to go ahead and develop a hypothesis and design an experiment now that we've gone over this Trudeau's experiment. I think you can do that, right? I think you can come up with a hypothesis and think of your own experiment. I'd like you to put it on a sheet of paper. I want you to upload it with the, uh, should I make, uh, I want you to upload it with your uh, revised, right, revision, your revised uh, uh, assignment. All right. We respect Dr. Trudeau and all his earlier scientists that did the work that best in contemporary understanding the problem they addressed and utilizing materials and technology they had in hand. Long sentence. Modern-day biologists like to talk about resistance, susceptibility genes, and patterns of inheritance rather than family blood. They think about infectious disease in terms of microbes, pathogenicity. What is pathogenicity? Yeah. Study of diseases. The ability, the, how well it's able to cause disease. So you're right. It's... Pathology is a study of disease. Pathogenicity is how well is, is this, whatever it is, able to cause disease. Patho means disease. All right, so microbes, we know there could be either bacteria or, or viruses or fungi. Rather than speaking about bad humors. So we're, in other words, we kind of narrowed it down rather than talking about general and generalities. They have identified vitamins and other nutrients that are abundant in some foodstuffs and are lacking in others are essential optimal immune f function. Without the benefit of such modern formulations, Dr. Joe, by the disciplined application of scientific curiosity and careful, clever methodology, shed on the light on each of these concerns, light that helped illuminate the minds of scientists who came after. That's a lot of... <laughs> a lot of... Uh, a lot of reading, just to say good job. It's almost time to go, I can tell. People are putting stuff away. Next time, could you just raise your hand and say it's almost time to go? Rather than putting stuff away and, and, and having conversations. Yeah? Well, hold on. We only got to do part one today. It's horrible. It's getting worse every year. Where do you seek for? So Trudeau made the distinction between helpful therapies and cures. So living a better lifestyle is not a cure, but it did help reduce, increase survivability, reduce the death rate. So... We're looking at this graph here, and one of the things about graphs is that you can project what's going to happen in the future if the trend is consistent, okay? So if this trend is consistent, if it stays the same, what do you, what do you predict is going to be the death rate from at 2000 or 2005 if we're looking at this, at this graph? 0.5 or 0, yeah. you might say that, or you might do a, a statistical analysis. Now pay attention. You might draw what some of you have done in middle school, I'm sure, maybe in, uh, in physics, is draw the best fit line. All right? And what you can do is, is draw a best fit line. It'll be something like, um, I'm do, I'm, this is a horrible line. But you draw something like this. I know. Well, that's as good as I can do without a ruler. So when we're looking at something like that, you see, this would be the be this is called a trend line. It's not from the actual data. But it's a line that's, that's kind of the average of all the data. 
It has to go through at least two points, usually, uh, that's on the data. But it's, what it does is it takes away, it helps reduce error. It helps reduce what, what one of the students here, and I don't like to say names during while I'm recording, but what one of the students here said earlier, which is one of the weaknesses of this experiment is there wasn't enough data points. There wasn't enough sample size. The sample size was small. Well, drawing the best list, best fit line helps reduce the error due to sample size error. Is that clear? Yeah. So what we could do is we can maybe, instead of predicting 0.5, at, we, we still might be at 0.5 or 0, but it's not going to be just extending it down. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So having that space, by the way, beyond the point, now stop, because here's where a lot of you have told me that you had trouble with graphing. You could not decide how to divide the axes. Remember you said that? Well, do you see how you have extra space to the right? That allows you to draw the best fit line and, predi and predict the future. Do you see that? Yeah. All right, we'll continue this Friday. Wait. I want to remind you that tomorrow and Thursday you have a speaker. He's coming in to talk about uh, food, the impact of food, uh, the food industry on the environment. Some of you have heard it before. You may have to walk out during uh, some of the session because he's going to show you some pretty disgusting things. Okay. Yeah. Number four. I'm sorry, my vision. On this page, oh, there it is. All of the following factors are important in causing worldwide resurgence of tuberculosis. Emergence of strains are resistant to one or more available antibiotics effective against them. So, you know, we'll talk about that on third, on Friday. Uh, hey, excuse me. Tomorrow and Thursday, there will be a gentleman here speaking to you about the impact of our... Oh, I'm talking to you. I need your attention. I'll wait. I really want to dismiss you. I'll wait. I'm waiting for you to stop fidgeting. So tomorrow and Thursday, you're going to have a gentleman come in here and speak to you uh, concerning our food industry and the impact on our environment. It, it speaks to our environment as a system, very much like the rabbit's environment we just talked about. Uh, we have an environment too. Can we stop putting our stuff away? I know you guys are in a hurry, but you have to sit down. It, it, you're, hold, you're holding us up. So make sure you're here on time. There's two or three of you that were at the, late today. Make sure you're, uh, you're getting things done and taking notes and paying attention. You may have to leave the room. He'll tell you when that is. You're going to see some things are disturbing. We're talking about our food supply. Do you know what that means? Watching animals get slaughtered. That we might, there will be sections where you're going to see how animals are slaughtered. We, if you have, if you are going to get upset about that, we're going to ask you to get to leave during those portions of the video. Is that clear? All right. Have a good one.